Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday evening, October 1st. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Well, we've turned the calendar over to October now during this busy 2020 hurricane season, and this is the time of year when we're starting to get beyond the absolute peak of the hurricane season, which occurs in mid-September, but we're still in the very active part of the season, which continues through much of October. What typically happens during this month is instead of the entire basin being supportive for storm formation, we start to shrink that region just a little bit and start to confine it a little bit more toward the south and west as the uh, Cabo Verde season near Africa begins to shut down for the year. Unfortunately, that doesn't change a whole lot for most people in the basin because storms forming over in the southwestern part are still over near all of the land areas of the Caribbean in the U.S. and Central America. So from our perspective, this isn't changing much in terms, of, in terms of preparedness for this month. So you should continue to be vigilant as this active hurricane season likely means that we're going to see uh, continued threats, especially in the Caribbean region, as the Central American monsoon tends to pick up during October and can spawn a lot of storms in this region of the world during La Nina years like we have now. And on that note, we do have a couple of systems to watch in the Caribbean this week. Uh, we have one tropical wave moving towards Central America now. This has been dubbed Invest 91L by the National Hurricane Center. And we have another tropical wave in the Eastern Caribbean, which may also bear watching during the next several days. There is a weak tropical wave over in the Eastern Atlantic, though most models don't anticipate development. It might have some small chances, but it's not expected to near land areas and will likely stay over open water. We're going to start off here with Invest 91L in the Western Caribbean as it is the most imminent threat. This is a zoomed in view of it and this is a wave we've been tracking for several days that has come through the Caribbean toward the West Northwest steadily and is now located somewhere northeast of Honduras and southwest of Grand Cayman up here. And if we start to assess the low level wind direction, We'll note that we have our southeasterly trade winds piling into the eastern side, generating a lot of convective activity over near and southwest of Jamaica. So southeast wind here. And then we also have a really strong cold front over the Gulf of Mexico here. And behind that, we have this strong northerly wind. And this wind actually comes beyond the frontal boundary and is starting to pour air across Central America out of the north and northwest. And so you'll see clouds doing this. Uh, in this uh, to the west of the wave. So we have southeasterly wind piling in, north wind toward the west. And as we get closer to the circulation today, uh, or closer to the wave axis, we actually do see northwesterly winds even just here to the west of the convective envelope that we're currently seeing northeast of Honduras. And this is suggesting to us that we're starting to see some kind of broad circulation develop in this region where the new clump of thunderstorms has been developing here near the time of sunset during the last few hours. And this general uh, geometry to the flow where we have this air behind the cold front wrapping around from the north and northwest while southeasterly trades pile in means this whole area is trying to rotate. So with all the flow around this system trying to make things spin, well, it's going to be easier for uh, the thing to actually start spinning. So we're likely seeing the beginnings of a circulation and area of low pressure forming here, and this will likely become a tropical depression or storm sometime between tonight and tomorrow night as it moves northwestward in the general direction of the Yucatan Peninsula. And we're expecting some sort of storm to be present between the northern uh, border of Belize and Cancun, Mexico, where exactly kind of depends on where this tightens up with the, within this envelope of rotation. It's not quite clear yet whether it's going to focus more on the northern side or the southern side. Therefore, there's uncertainty into exactly where along this portion of coastline it ends up in about 24 to 36 hours. Either way, uh, development is likely to be at only a modest pace here con considering that it's still broad and the primary impact is likely to be widespread heavy rainfall for Central America, also spreading far and wide further down in Central America and also Western Cuba expecting rainfall from this and so flash flooding is likely the primary threat here. If we look at the model evolution going forward, this is the European 850 millibar forecast. Uh, initialized this morning showing our wave here to the east of Honduras and you'll see that by tomorrow we have it focusing an area of broad low pressure by Friday morning east of Belize and then by Saturday morning you can see it moving into the Yucatan Peninsula here on this particular model still broad and weak on this particular run and you'll see that we still have that cold air coming in behind the cold front on the back side and the easterly trade winds coming in from the east 
And now if we look at how this works in the mid-levels, if we switch to the GFS where we can see that, uh, we'll see that on this moisture field here, we have a deep field of green indicating the moist pocket that the wave currently occupies, but you can clearly see this cold front as well. And this is going to play a pivotal role in 91L's future. This is a very strong front uh, that is rather stationary now at this point, but the, the presence of it means that there's a large mass of dry air awaiting 91L in the Gulf of Mexico. So you can imagine if a storm spins up here and moves northwestward, it will eventually start to wrap the dry air in behind it, assuming that a storm does develop. In addition, the front represents a zone of vertical shear because it's a thermal gradient, so the wind is changing toward more southwesterly with height, and we have a lot of deformation in the flow. That is to say, the flow is doing something like this in the mid-levels, and then scooting off to the northeast like this, trying to stretch anything out that moves into here, where it's getting pulled southwestward and northeastward simultaneously. These things are all obstacles that 91L will likely face once it nears the Yucatan. So what you're gonna see here on the GFS is that this wave does develop into a storm here near or east of Cancun by Friday evening and may actually briefly spin up into a decent looking tropical storm. But by the time it gets to this point, a few things occur. One, it may interact with the Yucatan Peninsula landmass, and that can, of course, be a detriment because uh, tropical cyclones like to be over water. But then we start to see this dry air encroach, like I mentioned, and we start to see the moisture get strung out to the northeast here in green as the mid-level flow tries to stretch out the storm. And at this point, all of these things may start to hurt any storm uh, that has formed at this point. So we don't get it much stronger than this. And on the GFS, what you'll see is that the dryer gets wrapped in. We get less dark green here. A lot of that moisture it did had gets whisked away. And keep in mind at this point also, again, uh, we're talking about southwesterly flow aloft along this old cold front. So the shear increases if the storm tries to edge north at all. So between the shear, the, the stretching deformation, and the land interaction, uh, any storm that we do get by tomorrow night may not strengthen very much uh, beyond the intensity that it gets to before nearing the Yucatan Peninsula. When we continue forward here, things get a little bit complicated because if the storm does indeed encounter these difficulties, which it looks like it will, it may weaken and become shallower or shorter and exist only in the lower atmosphere. And right now, the mid-level flow is trying to tug it toward Florida in this forecast, but the low-level flow behind the cold front is still out of the northeast, like we can see currently on uh, this uh, satellite loop. All this flow is behind the cold front out of the northeast, and that would try to force the storm down toward the southwest. Now, given all these obstacles that are hostile to the storm, we're likely to see it uh, weaken a bit here. And if that happens, it's going to try to drift westward. And that's what happens on the GFS and on most models right now, where it starts to move down into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Now, at this point, five days have gone by, so we're into Tuesday of next week. And at this point, some of the dry air might mix out and we see the storm re-intensify in the model and actually become a hurricane uh, west of the Yucatan Peninsula, at which point it may be something for the rest of the eastern coast of Mexico to pay attention to. But now we're out to uh, the middle of next week and things are pretty uncertain from this point forward. Now, keep in mind that this exact model solution I'm showing you may not come to pass exactly this way because we do have a messy broad system trying to consolidate and it could be, say, farther down near Belize. Remember the European model actually does have this a little farther south, the uh, GFS is farther north. And on the Euro, what this means is that it actually doesn't get tugged northeastward quite as much, and so it doesn't stall quite as much, and it kind of just goes inland on the European model, and in this case would remain weak just because it's over land instead of water. And so on the Euro, nothing much happens here. We don't get a storm west of the Yucatan or anything like that, uh, and it is a pretty short-lived event. On the GFS, it spends a little more time meandering near the southern Gulf of Mexico, and so we have a storm that's kind of sitting around and not dying fully, and so it's able to redevelop later. So there's a range of outcomes here. For those of you wondering whether this could get pulled northeastward toward Florida, right now that seems unlikely given that the storm is not expected to be very strong here. If it was very strong, uh, a mature hurricane, say, perhaps it would come this way, but right now there seems to be too much in the way in terms of hostile conditions to allow that to happen. So this is likely to weaken near Mexico and then drift westward, but some of this moisture will be streaming across the Florida Peninsula. So rainfall impacts uh, may occur regardless of whether the storm is several hundred miles away. 
So if we're looking out now at a slightly broader view of the Caribbean, we have 91L that we just talked about, but we also have a wave behind that is trying to move in south of Hispaniola. This one does not really have a, a designation right now. It's not an invest, but it would be 92L once it becomes one. This is kind of a wave that's a little tilted over. It's got a base uh, to the north of Venezuela, and then it's tilted east-northeastward toward the Lesser Antilles. So you can see this broad region of thunderstorm activity. And this is all trying to come westward, but it's also interacting with a very strong upper level trough right here. You can see some of these milky white cirrus clouds doing this west westerly motion toward the right here. And because of that, this eastern portion of the wave may lag behind and try to come up and interact with this upper level trough while the western part is trying to come deeper into the Caribbean. So this is kind of a messy situation with this particular wave. And uh, we may see uh, some complex outcomes of this. Uh, but if this part gets further west into the Caribbean, what will eventually happen is this cold front will eventually disappear once 91L interacts with it. And then when this comes in, it may have a, a pretty decent environment with which to try to develop potentially. Um, so here's on the on the GFS forecast, we can see by 12Z Sunday, so Sunday morning, go forward a couple days, we have our wave with one part here, one part moving up and interacting with that upper level trough. And this part is coming westward into an area that 91L is leaving. And uh, it may find itself in a fairly decent environment for development, considering that by uh, the same time on Sunday and then Monday, as the storm is coming into the Western Caribbean, uh, the general pattern kind of consists of a very large ridge as we get into the middle part of next week aloft. There is a little cutoff up or low here, but in general, the pattern would suggest lowish shear in the Western Caribbean. So that second wave may also find itself in a favorable environment. Again, though, it's a little complex because if we look at a different way of uh, viewing this here on the GFS, where our upper level trough, this is now current, this evening's map, where our second wave is currently here. The purple contours show where rotation is occurring in the low levels, and then the orange shows where the upper level trough is. You're going to see this part kind of move up and interact with this while this part goes westward. If we go forward into the weekend, you'll see that our wave is strung out. Again, western part, eastern part, and here's our very sharp upper level trough. This evolution may cause this part to start moving north of the Caribbean, and so it's possible that once this uh, upper level low cuts off, that we have a part to the south of it and also a part to the north of it. You can see that batch of uh, low level spin there in the purple contours. So we may actually end up with something even north of the Caribbean and near the Turks and Caicos that may need to be watched as we get into early next week. It's not at all very clear yet, and it's still a pretty muddy forecast, given that these uh, sharp upper level troughs and cutoff upper lows are difficult to predict for the models while they're interacting with deep convection. That is to say all the thunderstorms associated with this wave. That interaction is complex. So a pretty muddy uh, forecast for this one, but no imminent threat for development. Within a few days though, either this part or this part may be uh, areas of interest to watch as we get into the middle portion of next week. That's it for these uh, systems in the Caribbean. Again, the one to the east, not really a threat right now. 91L likely to become a storm sometime between tonight and tomorrow night, and uh, likely to bring uh, heavy rain impacts to southeastern Mexico, other portions of Central America, western Cuba, and perhaps even the Florida Peninsula as moisture streams northward this weekend and into next week. So likely a primary rainfall flooding hazard more than anything, but we could see some spin up with a little bit of wind here as well near a potential landfall point if it gets organized quickly. So we'll keep an eye on that uh, today and tomorrow. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.